to this 2020-2021 Fulbright Irish Awards LLM Law Webinar. My name is Emma Lockney and I'm the Communications Manager with the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. Today um, we're going to hear a little bit about the Fulbright Awards in general, but we're also going to hear lots about a number of programmes in the US. Um, we'll have three other presenters, Sean O'Brien, LLM Program Director from the University of Notre Dame, Professor Gabrielle Goodwin, Director of Graduate Legal Studies at Marist School of Law, and Elise Luce Kramer, Ex Executive Director of Graduate Programs at Penn Law, will all um, be joining us to speak. We're very lucky to have them with us today. So thank you very much for joining us, um, the three of you, and, and to your teams. Um, this is a very special opportunity for Irish students, EU students, to hear more about LLM programs in the US, the kind of application process from that side, and what um, the campuses have to offer. So before um, our guest speakers uh, join in, I will just go through a little bit of information about the Fulbright Awards themselves, okay? So Fulbright opportunities are for passionate and accomplished students, scholars, artists, teachers and professionals from all disciplines, okay, to re research, st study, teach or lecture in the USA. Uh, many of you who are joining us today will be particularly interested in um, going to undertake some study in law. Some of you may also be interested in research in law. Um, and there are options for everyone from all disciplines, as I say, at all levels, okay? Um, in terms of what the Fulbright Awards offer themselves, there is a monetary grant. Um, so the Fulbright Award um, can support uh, students uh, up to um, $30,000 um, per award. We also manage visa administration, accident and emergency insurance, cultural and professional programming. Um, that's both before you leave for the US on your award um, and when you return. And we provide ongoing support and links to a global network of Fulbright alumni, okay? We also um, support US students and scholars to come to Ireland as well as Irish going out to the US. So we have a very wide network of US alum as well as Irish alum. And you'll be able to connect into that network as soon as you join the Fulbright community. The awards are not just in practical, um, it's also experience of a lifetime, okay? And this is according to many, many of our alumni who've gone off on Fulbright Awards to the US and to from US citizens who've come to Ireland on Fulbright Awards. Um, it's a lifelong uh, connection to the Fulbright um, Network and the Fulbright Alumni Group. We have an alumni association here in Ireland. Um, there are 180 countries um, currently around the world um, who are managing Fulbright programs, sending their citizens to the US, bringing US citizens into their own countries. So it's a massive community um, that you'll be taking part in. Um, there's also recognition in the Fulbright Awards. Um, they're very well known in the US, um, so they can open doors for you in terms of um, applying to a college to a certain course, um, looking for um, letters of affiliation if you wish to go and do research. And the Fulbright family is how we refer to it really because it really is something that will um, stay with you for life, um, create a support system for you. Um, there are many uh, people who are further down the line in terms of their career and um, who can provide mentor support for you through the Fulbright Network. It's an opportunity to join global peers. So when you go to the US, whether it's to do an LLM program, a master's, or to do research, um, you're joining Fulbrighters from all over the world um, who, who are specializing in their subjects, who you can learn a lot from and who you can teach a lot to. Okay. In terms of eligibility for the Fulbright Awards themselves, these Irish awards are open to Irish citizens and to EU citizens. Um, if you're an EU citizen, you need to have been resident in the Republic of Ireland for three or more years. You need to demonstrate a strong rationale for going to the US and where you're going in the US. So why is it you need to do this uh, master's, this LLM program, um, or your research in the US? Why can't you do it in Ireland? Um, why can't you do it in Europe? Think about that and develop it for your Fulbright application. You must be willing to comply with the two-year home rule visa requirement. 
Okay, so this means that when you finish your Fulbright Award, um, you need to come home and fulfill two years in your in your home country, in Ireland. Um, bear in mind, okay, if you are hoping to do a master's program that is more than one year, you can of course stay on and finish that program, but that to your home rule will apply um, after you finish uh, the degree program, okay? You can't be a dual US Irish citizen. If you are, you're not eligible for the Irish awards, unfortunately. Um, you may be eligible, of course, for the LLM programs, but just not through um, the Fulbright Awards. You can't be living in the US at the time of application. So if you've already started an LLM program, and you're looking for funding for, um, you, you know, halfway through, that's not possible. It needs to be for supporting your first year of the LLM or the program. You can't have recent extensive experience of studying or living in the U.S. So this, um, you know, don't worry if you've gone over to do a J-1. If you've spent some time in the U.S., that's not a problem. It's more like if you've spent the last four or five, four out of five years living or um, working in the U.S. that you might be deemed ineligible. In terms of our Fulbright application deadline, applications are now open. Uh, the, the deadline is 31st of October 2019. Reviews will take place November to December 2019. If you're shortlisted for interview, you'll be called for interview in January, between January and February, and then offers will be made in March 2020. So if you are applying to a LLM program, a degree course, um, of course, the application dates will differ. Um, you will need to let us know where you plan to apply to, that information should be included in your Fulbright application, but of course we understand that you will not have been accepted to that pro program by 31st of October. So it's just up to you to list where you plan to go and your rationale for why you plan to go there. In terms of planning for your Fulbright application, you should review the information on our website. So if you haven't visited Fulbright.ie yet, please do. There's an a lot of FAQs there, um, questions that people have asked over the years that we've included in that FAQ section, so it's well worth reviewing that. You need to choose your award category. I'll just go very briefly through our four award categories now in a minute. Um, you need to then find a course or plan your research proposal. So if you're going to do an LLM, it's just a case of selecting which course um, you'd like to do, what's your um, first preference, if you have uh, an alternate um, as well. Um, if you're planning to go and do law research, um, you need to develop your proposal. Um, you need to research what it means to be a Fulbrighter. This is particularly important for your uh, Fulbright application. You'll need to do a project statement of what you plan to do over there in terms of academics, but you'll also need to do a personal essay and uh, tell us what it means to you to be a Fulbrighter. So I would suggest going onto our YouTube channel, Fulbright Ireland, um, watching the number of videos and testimonials from Fulbrighters uh, to, to, to learn more about the Fulbright ethos what it means to be a Fulbrighter, to be an ambassador for your country as a Fulbrighter in the US. We also have um, our general webinar is recorded and now online on that Fulbright Ireland YouTube channel as well. If you missed that webinar last week, um, I would suggest watching back over it in addition to this webinar because I will go through the, the Fulbright process in greater detail in that webinar, um, whereas today is more dedicated to finding out about LLM programs in particular. And then, of course, register your interest online. If you haven't registered your interest online yet, visit Fulbright.ie, um, and this is one of the first steps towards completing your Fulbright application because we will send you out the Fulbright Irish Award Guidelines, in addition to the online link um, for applications for Fulbright Awards uh, once you have registered your interest online. So step one, register your interest at Fulbright.ie. Then you need to choose your award categories. Categories. You'll need to let us know which award category you're choosing in that registration form. So those four award categories I mentioned very briefly. If you're applying for a student LLM award, you'll be applying as an Irish student, okay? So that's this blue category here on the left. We also do have um, awards available for uh, scholars, Tech Impact, FLTA. The one relevant to you if you're applying to an LLM program is Student Award, that's for postgraduate research or degree programs. Um, as I say, we have 
opportunities for those who are further along in academia um, or have five years professional experience to go and do uh, research or lecturing. Um, Tech Impact is uh, along the same lines for, for those with a PhD or uh, five years relevant prof professional experience. This has an ITCT focus. Um, and then the Fulbright Irish Awards, if you're not aware of them, um, the FLTA Awards are to teach Irish language. So if you are fluent in Irish or know anyone who is fluent in Irish language, there's opportunities to go and teach the Irish language and take courses as well. Um, for these student award categories, that if you're applying for an LLM award, you'll be applying through um, these um, you need to apply to your degree course with the US institution, okay? So that, that's in parallel to applying to your Fulbright application. And those who wish to go and do research would have to establish affiliation. Um, these, the Irish awards, Irish Fulbright award element will cover four to 12 months. But as I say, if your degree program that you're applying for is longer than that, um, you can continue on um, at the institution for the duration of that course. So uh, the LLM programs we're going to hear about today um, are the one at uh, Mara School of Law, one at uh, Notre Dame School uh, at Law School, and at Penn Law School. Okay, um, Mara School of Law and Notre Dame are offering full tuition waivers for successful Fulbright applicants, um, and then Penn Law School is offering a thirty thousand dollar tuition waiver. Okay, so these are. Ex very, very significant um, in terms of an Irish or EU student applying to go over and do um, an LLM program to have this these full tuition waivers or even the partial tuition waiver. And then hopefully in addition, if your Fulbright application is successful, you could have up to um, $30,000 for your Fulbright award. So these will go a very, very long way um, to, um, you know, you getting on the road to, to completing an LLM. So um, it's well worth finding out lots more. So um, without further ado, um, I will pass over to my colleague, Sean. Um, bear with me now, Sean, while I find you, and I think unmute you here. Now, Sean. Um, Thank you, you Emma. I should be able to hear you now. I'll just pass over the presenter role to you as well. Okay, you should be able to take over. Great. Great. Thanks, Amelia, for joining us, Sean. So I will now mute myself and we can hear from you for a little bit. Okay. Great. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen now. So everyone should be able to see it. Yeah. Great, Sean. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much for this opportunity and to the other distinguished guests on the line and to all of the attendees in the seminar. Again, my name is Sean O'Brien and I direct and teach in the International Human Rights Law LLM program here at Notre Dame Law School. Our program is a little bit of a different beast. It's exclusively focused on international human rights law. It's the first and one of the only programs in the world to offer this exclusive focus of preparing lawyers uh, with the knowledge and the skills that they need to be more effective human rights advocates. We have this exclusive focus because of our history. The LLM program is a joint center of the CLOW Center for Civil and Human Rights. I have our webpage up here now and the law school here at Notre Dame. Our center was founded in 1973 by Father Theodore Hesburgh, who was president of the university at the time and was also chair of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. He was fired from that role on the commission by President Nixon because Hesburgh and his commission were critical of the U.S. of, of Nixon's civil rights record. The U.S. Civil Rights Commission is somewhat similar to the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission. Our uh, center, our LLM program itself, was founded in 1988 when Father Hesburgh, here he's pictured with Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at a protest at Soldier Field in Chicago, when Hesburgh traveled to South Africa to meet with his friend, Judge Richard Goldstone, who was one of the few 
federal court judges using his judgeship to attack apartheid from the inside. And Hesburgh asked Goldstone, who ended up becoming uh, the, the South African Constitutional Court Justice and Chief UN Prosecutor, he asked Goldstone, what can Notre Dame do to help you in your struggle against apartheid? And Goldstone's response was very direct. He said, educate our lawyers. And that's what we've done. Since 1988, we have educated more than 400 human rights lawyers from over 100 countries. And you can see them and where they're from on our LLM alumni map here. And you can see the hundreds of lawyers around the world who have come to Notre Dame, including recently a lawyer from Ireland. Um, also on this page, you can read the profiles uh, of our recent classes, all the different students who have graduated, and a link to the places that they've gone on to work. This web page shows you what a Notre Dame human rights degree can do for you. And you can see our graduates working at international tribunals, intergovernmental bodies, in government, academia, and working in human rights NGOs. I mentioned that our program is a joint program of the Klaus Center and the Law School. And now I'd like to jump over to our Law School page where you can read more about our LLM program and you can see the profiles of the 20 lawyers from 15 countries uh, who are in this year's class, including three Fulbright uh, scholars from around the world. Um, I encourage you to spend some time with these profiles, take a look at them. Um, what I hope emerges is that we have a wide variety of experience in our program. Some of the lawyers in our program have many years of working in the human rights field, and others are at the very beginnings of their careers. I hope that you see yourselves and your own experiences in these biographies. And what I hope you'll also see is that we put together a class of incredible geographic diversity. You may be able to study, and I know you can, study human rights at fine universities around the world, other universities in Europe, other universities in Ireland. But there's nowhere else that brings together a group of human rights lawyers from Latin America, from Sub-Saharan Africa, from Middle East and North Africa, from Asia, and yes, from across Europe as well. What are these students doing at Notre Dame? Well, they are following a, a curriculum that mixes uh, uh, required courses as well as elective courses or courses of the student's own choosing. Uh, and on our website here, you can see the typical lineup we have for required courses in the fall semester and in the spring semester. Um, in addition, uh, because we are, are an interdisciplinary program and because we are housed not only in the law school, but in the Keough School of Global Affairs, our students take classes outside of the law school. Uh, they take classes in the business school. They take classes on multinational corporations and human rights with MBA students. They take courses on philosophy and the foundations of human rights in the uh, uh, arts and letters school. And they also take courses uh, in the Keough School of Global Affairs. Um, you can see that uh, the Keough, I'm sorry, the Klaus Center is one of seven institutes in the Keough School of Global Affairs. Other uh, institutes where our students take classes are the Manovic Institute for European Studies, or they may take human rights related courses in the Kellogg Institute for Democracy and Human Development. Very often they take courses in the Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies, where they take courses on conflict transformation and, um, and, and, uh, and peace work. Um, they also take courses uh, uh, sometimes in the Keough Naughton Institute for Irish Studies. The Keough Naughton Institute was founded in 1993 by Seamus Dean. And I personally studied with Seamus Dean and Seamus Heaney at Notre Dame during my master's. And their legacy continues here uh, with one of the top centers for the study of Irish language, history, and culture 
in the world. Um, our Keonaughton Institute uh, in recent years has uh, produced uh, the 1916 Irish Rebellion film. It was narrated by Liam Neeson and won the best documentary series at the Irish Film and Television Awards. The faculty for Keonaughton includes scholars in 10 different disciplines at the university. Recently, Michael Higgins was a visitor. Mary Robinson's a frequent visitor. And I recently had dinner at my home with Mary McAleese, who was a visitor and taught a course here in the law school on children's rights. My, st my children still talk about the day when the president of Ireland uh, sat at our dinner table. Um, on the webpage here of Keo Naughton, you can see that Notre Dame has a growing presence uh, in Ireland um, with uh, locations uh, uh, on uh, O'Connell House uh, on Marion Square. And we also have location uh, at uh, the um, Kyle Moore Abbey in Galway is now a, uh, uh, a Notre Dame uh, facility where uh, dozens of our students uh, study each year. Uh, you can see Kyle Moore on the, on the website, but I'm sure you're familiar with Kyle Moore Abbey. Clearly, Notre Dame has a home in Ireland and the Irish have a home at Notre Dame. Returning to our law school webpage, uh, you can read about the internship program that also is distinctive about our LLM program. After graduation, we provide funding for our students, including Fulbright students, to secure a three to six month human rights related internship at an appropriate human rights organization, maybe at the European Court of Human Rights or Human Rights Watch or uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva. And we use our vast alumni network of more than 400 human rights lawyers from over 100 countries to help secure these internships for our students. And these, these internships can be pathways to uh, full employment in the area of human rights law. And to make that point, I'd like to show you a little bit about our inaugural Fulbright Ireland Scholarship holder, uh, Ruth Cormican. Ruth, you can Google Ruth. It comes up with news stories about how we uh, featured her presence here at Notre Dame. Fulbright Ireland is also very proud of, uh, of Ruth and her work. Um, she was our inaugural recipient uh, in 2017. She graduated uh, first class honors from NUI Galway in 2016. Um, she studied business and human rights here at Notre Dame, was her focus. Um, she even traveled to London and Geneva with our faculty who were involved in the negotiation of the, uh, the, the treaty on business and human rights that's still being discussed and we'll have an important session uh, in Geneva on that treaty in Geneva. After she graduated, she did her internship um, at uh, the Irish Center for Human Rights at NUI Galway um, with Shaban Malali. And then she was hired uh, by the Irish government as the human rights attache for the permanent, permanent mission of Ireland to the UN in Geneva. You can see that on her LinkedIn page. Uh, basically, she represented uh, Ireland before the uh, Human Rights Council in Geneva. And you can see here on her uh, LinkedIn page, after NUI Galway, she was waitressing at Moran's Oster, uh, Oyster Cottage. And then she came to Notre Dame as a Fulbright scholar, did her internship, and her next employment was as the human rights attache in Geneva. This, in a, in a nutshell, I would say, or, 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 or I should say in an oyster shell, is what our human rights program at Notre Dame can do for you. This is the transformative effect it can have on your trajectory as an Irish uh, human rights lawyer. How do you apply for our program? You come back to our webpage on the law, uh, the law school webpage, and, and down towards the bottom is the requirements to apply and a link to the application. Like most other uh, law programs in the United States, we use the LSAC application, which is very straightforward uh, and, and available online. If you have any questions about 
our program or about that application or about the Irish at Notre Dame, uh, I'd be happy to answer your questions at the end of this webinar, or you can find my contact information quite easily uh, by Googling Sean O'Brien uh, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, there are a few of us actually, Sean O'Brien's at Notre Dame. So maybe Sean O'Brien Human Rights Notre Dame would be the, uh, the, the, the better search terms. But uh, thank you for your time, and I'm happy to pass the, uh, the baton back over to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, that's fantastic. I mean, it just sounds like a wonderful opportunity um, to make amazing connections, very global and diverse community, and also options to travel as well um, within the the mass within the LLM itself, and then also the internship. So, really great to hear about that. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, yeah, if you can stay with us, we'll get maybe answer some questions at the end. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Um, okay, I'll just mute you now, and I will pass it over to um, Gabrielle in Maurer. Um, let me just pull her up here. Now, Gabrielle, we should be able to hear you now. Hi there. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, and I'll just pass over the um, presenter role to you now. Okay. okay, two seconds, bear with me. Now you should get a notification now. Might just require you to, to download something there. Okay, I think we can see you now. Can you see? Uh, yeah, I can see a screen, all right. I just can't see the presentation yet. You might just need to click on the screen that you want to use if you're using two screens. There's a the button in the, in the middle of the Join Me at the top. If you click, ah, yes, I can see it now. Yeah, so if you just put that on slideshow mode, it'll be perfect. Is it on slideshow? Uh, no, if you just click that, that, uh, Button up the to the to the top, you know. So it's we you're gone now again. Um, so if you just share your screen again and then put into slideshow mode, you know sometimes when you have two screens, it it's a little bit tricky. All right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It just behind it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We can we can see it now. Okay. That's Wonderful. it. <laughs> Thanks for helping. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm uh, happy to be here and um, to be able to present the Indiana University Mauer School of Law and what we have available to um, Fulbright awardees. Um, this is just a quick introduction of who we are in the International Programs and Graduate Legal Studies Office. Leslie Davis is the Assistant Dean for International Programs, so she works with the partnership agreements that we have all over the world. Um, that's me in the middle there, Gabrielle Goodwin. I'm the Director of Graduate Legal Studies, and uh, so the academic advisor for all of our uh, graduate students, and I teach in the program as well. And then at the bottom there is Mr. William Shad. He's the Director of Graduate Admissions, and so he is the first person that um, an applicant would correspond with and that can help, he can help through the uh, process of application and admissions, including any questions about the Fulbright Awards and um, past awardees that we have uh, had in the program. Um, some uh, of you may or may not know where we are located. Indiana University is in Bloomington, Indiana, and Indiana is uh, located in what's called the Midwest region of the United States, even though it's not really in the middle or in the west of the United States. Um, we are in southern Indiana, um, not too far from Chicago, Cincinnati, Louisville, Nashville. Um, it makes a convenient jumping off state, uh, spot to other cities in the um, east and midwest of the U.S. Um, 
we are uh, Indiana University um, was uh, Mauer School of Law specifically was founded in 1842, so it is the ninth oldest law school in the United States, the fifth oldest public law school in the United States, and the first established in the Midwest. Um, we're a top 40 public university, and the Indiana law is ranked this year's 34th law school in the nation. Um, we have certain specialty areas, international law, tax law, IP, and cybersecurity that are especially strong and that we are um, especially proud of. Cybersecurity is um, an area that has been um, very strong and innovative at Indiana law for years. And in fact, we now have a um, an MS degree in cybersecurity risk management that is an interdisciplinary degree with Mauer School of Law, the Kelly Business School, and informatics. Um, and this is a, kind of a, a leading and one of a kind program uh, around in the world, I, I believe. We also offer graduate certificates in cybersecurity and information privacy that law students can um, can get while doing a graduate degree, so while doing an LLM. We've recently been ranked um, in as one of the top LLM programs in the law school experience, the value for money, and academics uh, among the LLM programs in the US. And we're, we're proud of that. Um, that international jurist has for the second year in a row recognized the program in that way. It's also, um, I think, an amazingly beautiful campus here in Indiana. And um, I, one of the things that students are surprised at when they first arrive is just how beautiful the campus is. Um, it has a variety of different offerings on the larger IU campus in addition to um, the town of Bloomington, which is a quintessentially um, you know, Midwestern college town. This is the view down Kirkwood Avenue, which is kind of our main street um, from campus. So you can see it is pretty, what, pretty much what you might expect in uh, a Midwest college town. But there's also a lot to offer here as far as music venues. Um, there are lots of bars and theaters, restaurants, um, sporting events. Uh, Lotus Fest is an international world music event every year that's quite um, well known. So there is, in addition to time spent studying in the library, there's also a lot of opportunity for a variety of different activities here in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, our graduate programs, specifically, we offer a traditional LLM degree, which is usually one year, two semesters long, although some students choose to do a three-semester LLM. Um, we also offer an LLM with thesis, which requires additional credits and one extra semester. Um, there is a one-semester certificate that's available, uh, a Master of Comparative Law, a Doctor of Juridical Science, or the SJD, which is kind of like a PhD in law. And then we have what is somewhat unusual in, in a United States law school, a PhD in law and democracy. And then an advanced standing JD, which allows people uh, coming from uh, a jurisdiction that where you might have an LLB and have done previous coursework in law to transfer those credits into the JD program, or if you are working in our LLM program, you can transfer some credits and make the JD program shorter than its usual three-year program. Some of our students do a general LLM and take a variety of coursework. Um, there are only two required courses for the LLM, and that those are Introduction to American Law and a Legal Discourse and Writing class. Um, you 
you have a huge variety of classes available to choose from. Any class that is um, here at the law school is typically open to LLM students. Um, and therefore, you can kind of craft your own LLM program and uh, take the courses that you are most interested in. We also do have specializations, however, and this is the list of six um, specializations that you can do in order to focus on an area of law. A specialization gives a, a few courses that are required, but also allows students to take other classes, and then in the end uh, provides a certificate um, saying that you, you uh, were successful in the specialization. Some of our LLM students do uh, plan to sit for a U.S. bar exam, and it is possible in a few different um, states in the U.S., not every state, however, and not typically in Indiana for foreign trained attorneys. However, we provide information sessions and support for those students that are interested in taking U.S. bar exam, usually it's the New York bar exam, although we do have students also take the California and the D.C. bar exams. Some other highlights of our program, uh, we, we have quite a diversity of students in the building um, in, uh, in all of our programs, so we have international JD students, we have international LLM coming from uh, at 20 to 25 countries, usually every year. We have SJD students coming from a variety of backgrounds as well. Uh, all LLM students take their classes with the JD students, uh, except for the two required LLM courses. Every other course, as I said, can be a JD course as well. We think that we offer a really wonderful opportunity um, for doing an LLM because we have a, a fantastic program um, that is highly ranked, but is cost less than uh, many programs around the country um, for a couple of reasons. Our tuition is, tends to be lower, and then our cost of living in Bloomington is lower, as you can imagine, um, than, say, uh, New York City or San Francisco. So the combination of those two aspects um, is, is very attractive, I think, for many of our, our students. Um, our classes are also typically small. Um, there may be some larger classes of 60 to 80 students, and those are required JD classes, um, so they tend to be larger. But the usual class size is somewhere between 20 and 30, and some of our specialized courses are um, as few as 5 to 10. Um, so quite a variety, but a lot of personal attention and focus, and um, professors tend to have an open door policy so that students are able to go in and get to know their professors ask questions, um, and feel like they're getting the attention that they need in order to be successful. Um, just a few numbers that may be of interest, um, the number of JD students versus the number of international graduate students in, in the law school, um, the student-faculty ratio, 6 to 1, which is quite low, and I think that adds to the personal attention that our students feel that they get in the program. Costs, um, the tuition cost, uh, that's actually the full tuition fees, cost of living, everything there added together. Now, for this uh, Fulbright Award, we offer a full tuition waiver um, with the Fulbright Award, making it, it, it obviously extremely affordable. But we also offer all of the Fulbright applicants at least a half, um, a half tuition waiver so that, that it uh, also is quite affordable, um, even if you are not um, successful in being awarded the, the one uh, full tuition waiver. 
Um, lots of countries that have um, an IU international office, alumni office, so there's ongoing support for our students after the program, getting to um, network with people all over the world. Um, we have gateway offices around the world. Um, and so it is uh, uh, coming to the LLM program makes you part of the IU family generally, and definitely the Maurer School of Law family specifically. And that, that continues forever. Um, so the scholarship, um, as you, as Emma explained earlier, what that includes, um, so I'm not going to go into that again here. I uh, wanted to get to some more details about housing options in Bloomington because this is some, some of the practicalities that are important to students. There is on-campus housing available and it is a wide variety of costs depending on the kind of place, uh, whether it's a residence hall versus an unfurnished apartment on campus. There's also off-campus housing and again, this really can range anywhere from $400 to $800 per bedroom, um, and it, it really will depend on what, what you decide is your level of um, comfort and um, uh, luxury as to what you want to, where you want to live for the year. One thing that's really nice that we have um, at the law school is we have an Irish house, uh, which is where our students are from coming from Ireland tend to live. Um, it sometimes is an Irish slash French slash um, Dutch house because we have a variety of different students living in it um, depending on the number of students um, that are coming uh, each year. So it's a, it's a nice place and Irish students get first choice um, living in Irish house. And it's located not too far from the law school, definitely within walking distance. You can see the law school up there, up right, and then down at the bottom on the left is where Irish House is located. So that's a really wonderful opportunity for um, any of the, the Fulbright awardees. Um, some Irish House alumni here, um, various uh, students that we've had coming from Ireland in the past um, that have lived there. And um, I believe that the picture on the right is that's Professor Christiana Ochoa um, when she was at Trinity meeting with some of our alums um, that had once upon a time lived in Irish House. Uh, admissions, we have uh, admissions running in the spring and in the fall. Um, both are, are possible to join the program, um, both dates and so we take applications throughout the year. There is a link there with the um, how to apply and the contact for the Director of Admissions, Mr. Shad, um, and he is happy to answer any questions. And then some um, more social media links to get to know the program a little bit better, get to know us, and ask any questions um, that you might have. And I believe we'll have this um, PowerPoint uh, slides available so that you can have access to any of these links if you would like to. So that is it for me and I thank you for the opportunity to present the program and I'm happy to answer any questions at any point if you have them. So thank you all. Thank you very much, Gabrielle. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, we will be. We are recording the presentation, the whole session, so people can watch it back and find the the details again. Um, great to hear um, that. You know, Amara, there's such an opportunity to explore a number of different areas of law and also to get insight into cost of living there, um, comparably to to Ireland as well. So thank you so much for that. Okay, I'm going to bring back that um, presenter role, if that's okay. Um, and I have here um, the, oh, apologies, skipping, um, the presentation for Pamela. So I'll just um, get Elise um, up here on our audio. Um,
now. At least we should be able to hear you now, hopefully. Thank you, Emma. I'm so delighted to be here today, and thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoyed the presentations from uh, my colleagues at Indiana and Northwestern. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Notre Dame. Um, and uh, hello to the viewers are, who are with us today, and hello to the viewers who will be watching this uh, online in the days to come. Uh, I'm going to try to be uh, brief because I appreciate everyone's patience and I'm taking notice of the time. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, so why don't we actually uh, just skip a couple of slides. Uh, we don't need this one, we don't need the next, and I'll start with the uh, third slide. Okay, so let me uh, say why pen law. I think there are really four things about pen law that stand out amongst LLM programs in the U.S. We really have a world-class faculty, including many uh, faculty related to human rights uh, work, which we've talked about. We actually had the former um, president of Ireland, Mary Robinson, was our graduation speaker three years ago. Uh, we also really, um, in addition to being an Ivy League school and quite um, you know, premier in terms of reputation, we also really focus on a culture of collegiality where collegiality and excellence really go hand in hand um, and collaboration is key. We also offer the Wharton Business and Law Certificate. It's available to all LLM students. Uh, there's no separate application process um, and about half our students do, do do that. I'll talk about it a little bit more. And we're in Philadelphia. Um, so Philadelphia is a major U.S. city. Um, it's uh, between New York and D.C. Uh, if you're willing to buy the expensive train ticket, you can get to New York in an hour. If you want to take the cheap bus, you're talking a couple of, uh, couple of hours. And Philadelphia itself is really booming these days. It is um, safe and fun, and um, the housing costs are still quite reasonable, uh, especially in light of how dynamic uh, a city it is. So why don't we move to the next slide, please, Emma? Okay, so um, Penn Law is truly uh, has academic uh, excellence um, in all its um, offerings. Um, so for our LLMs, um, they uh, like uh, our friends in Indiana, will take classes alongside with their JDs. Um, however, we do offer this unique summer program, which all our LLMs uh, must do, and it's just for them. It's a five-week course in the summer, and during that time, you will get uh, five credits, um, and you will uh, receive um, the foundations in U.S. law and U.S. Uh, research and writing courses, so that when come fall and you're in those um, sort of challenging upper level JD classes, you will have the benefit not only of your Irish legal education, but enough kind of background in U.S. legal education to really be able to fit in and thrive in those types of classes. Um, during the summer, we also just do a lot of fun things in Philadelphia, social things, um, professional stuff. It's really just an opportunity for the LLMs to become fully uh, comfortable with uh, with uh, the U.S., with Philadelphia, with uh, the law school and the university. Um, so in the fall and spring semesters, you really can take whatever you'd like. It's inc an incredibly diverse um, uh, curriculum, you know, anything from corporate law to human rights, criminal law, IP, um, and you can... Um, take seminars, you can take clinics, you can take um, large lecture classes, and this year for the first time we are offering some concentration. You don't have to apply in advance, it's just a matter of completing a certain types of coursework in international property and technology law or in global security, sustainability, and human rights. Um, and there, there are a bunch of courses that you have to select from, and if you complete those courses, that'll be uh, indicated on your transcript. We also offer um, four of our clinics are open to um, LLMs, including our transnational clinic, which deals mainly with um, refugee and immigration issues. 
um, our journals, typically about five of the seven journals are open to LLMs as well. Uh, next slide, please, Emma. So, uh, of course, coming to the U.S., your experience should be much beyond the classroom. So much of being um, abroad is really taking advantage of the opportunity to uh, spend time with your fellow LLMs from around the world, with the JDs, with people in the community. Um, so some of the things that we do to support students beyond the classroom is we have an incredibly robust um, public interest center, um, and almost all of our LLMs are involved in pro bono uh, services, working with uh, local organizations and with the JDs. Um, about half our students sit for the New York Bar, and the New York Bar does have a 50-hour pro bono requirement, and we work specifically in supporting our students who would like to fulfill that and matching them with appropriate opportunities. We have a dedicated career counselor who works one-on-one -on -one with our LLMs and also does uh, a wide range of um, programming uh, specifically for LLMs, much of it during the summer and into the year. Um, we have uh, already, our LLMs have had uh, trips to the Third Circuit to watch uh, arguments. Uh, we also go, you know, there are local law firms, bar association events both here They've also uh, been invited to events, uh, evening events in New York City that um, many of our LLMs go to. Um, we're also close enough to go to events in DC. Um, it's an enormous uh, and very international camp at this. We have the largest number of, uh, of um, international students in the, in the um, Ivy League. Um, Student activities just at the law school are more than 90 clubs, everything from uh, a group that puts on a musical to playing soccer to affinity groups. And of course, our LLMs really enjoy Philadelphia's nightlife. There are a lot of restaurants and clubs and music venues and art and shopping, and we're really into our professional sports here. So it's a, uh, there's really, I think uh, the students often describe the year as trying to drink from a fire hose. There's just more to do that you can possibly take advantage of. Um, next slide, please, Emma. So the University of Pennsylvania, uh, as I mentioned, um, it's quite a large and international campus. Um, one thing that's really great about the Penn campus is that all 11 of the schools professional and undergraduate are all on the same campus, which allows it to be quite interdisciplinary. So for the students who do that Wharton certificate, they're able to walk, it's about a five minute walk, or it takes me 10 minutes, I'm getting a little slow, up to Wharton for their classes. Um, and we're right, the university is sort of right across the river from Center City, which allows students the opportunity to find housing both in the university city, which is a little bit um, more affordable and uh, student-y, and we also have dorms that students are welcome to um, stay in, or some of our students, especially our LLMs, uh, many of them are a little bit older and they're more comfortable living in Center City or other neighborhoods that have um, aren't completely dominated by uh, university students. Next slide, please. Um, so again, the Wharton certificate, uh, that's a picture of uh, one of the buildings at Wharton. It's a custom design program taught by Wharton faculty. Um, and as I mentioned, our LLMs are automatically enrolled. Um, and about half of the class does it. The classes are in the evenings and are really designed to work at the same time as the LLM program. It is an additional um, tuition. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here's Philadelphia. That's our city hall with William Penn at, on top, which used to be the tallest building for many years, but now we really have a huge skyline with many, many tall buildings. Um, it really is quite a lovely place to live. Um, and uh, there's also a lot of natural beauty nearby. There's uh, beaches uh, on the Jersey Shore, there's the lakes and skiing of the Poconos, so um, it's a great 
uh, sort of launching pad of a place to be to explore um, all sorts of things while you spend the year doing your LLM. Next slide, please. So here is a little bit about our class. Normally our class is about 115 students from typically 30 plus. This year we overshot the mark a little bit. We More students said yes than we anticipated, so we have 126 um, from 30 plus. Uh, we, an Irish student we have this year, uh, Margaret Ann Gallagher, a uh, wonderful student, lovely, very focused on human rights, um, issues, and she has very graciously volunteered her email address, which you can see on this slide, and she'd be delighted to speak to any prospective students about her experience in the application process or her experience here so far. Uh, next slide, please, Emma. And here I just thought I would show you one of the past Fulbright, Irish Fulbrighters who came to Penn Law. This is Rosemary Hennigan. Um, she also very much graciously would be happy to speak with prospective students. That's her email. After, um, while at Penn Law, she was quite involved in the International Human Rights Association, and um, she is currently working for the Irish Refugee Council as a policy and advocacy um, uh, officer. Uh, so next slide, that's our, just, uh, our class, Jumping for Joy. Actually, that one's a little old. Um, and let me just say, because I, did, I, 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 I didn't want to take up too much time, that we do use the LSAC application like our peers. However, our deadline is a bit sooner. Um, it's not as soon as your Fulbright deadline, but we uh, need to get the applications by mid-December. If you need just a little extra time, we do have an opportunity for you to apply for a deadline extension, but we do not have uh, spring. You know, we, it's all together. You have to apply uh, in the fall for the to be part of the following class. So I hope that that uh, information is enough to get you started. You're certainly welcome to get in touch with us on our website or at Grad Admissions, G R A D A D M S, at law.upenn.edu. Um, and we certainly wish you all the best as you consider what your options might be. We hope uh, that you'll think about Penn Law amongst them. Thank you, Emma. Excellent. Thank you so much, Elise. Um, sounds like there's lots of uh, potential to engage culturally there at Penn and great support for, for students in terms of on campus and networking as well. So another wonderful opportunity. Um, I'll just go back to um, my slides, hopefully, so we can, I can just give you the names of all the participants again if you have any particular questions for any of them. Um, so I'll just unmute now all of our speakers, if that's okay, um, with you speakers. Um, so if there's any questions, all of you can can just chime in and answer them. Um, so I have Gabrielle, um, Elise uh, now should be audible, and then Sean here. Um, so all three of you should be audible now. I did see um, one question already in the text box. We, we can't hear the participants, but we can hear our speakers now. If anyone wants to ask them a question, um, please do just type into the chat box and I'll, and I'll call those questions out to our speakers. I know we had one already. Um, it was for Sean. Um, and it was just a question, Sean, on whether, um, did you say Ruth was able to take uh, both human rights streams and business streams at the same time? Um, is this possible? Is this what she did? So she didn't take a separate, a separate stream in business. She took elective courses related to business and human rights. So there's a class on UN Global Compact that's offered in the business school. There's a class on multinational corporations and human rights that's offered in the business school. There's also a program called Business on the Front Lines, which is a six credit course that in involves uh, teaming up with peace study students and MBA students and traveling to a country and 
and consulting on a uh, an NGO project. Um, those are the types of elective courses that she took um, that supplemented her main focus on uh, human rights law. Good question. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Hopefully that clears that up for you, Andrew. Um, if there's any other questions, please be, feel free to type sorry, type them even into the text box um, and we can get our speakers to answer them. Um, I know actually as well, um, was it yourself, Sean, that was saying that your Fulbright awardee um, went on and was able to do the, the internship while she was there? Yeah, you know, she did a post postgraduate internship. The, um, yes. the 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 program itself is pretty intense in the nine months uh, that the LLM students are with us, and so some students do engage in research with faculty, but they don't tend to do an internship while they are doing their degree. So we have a postgraduate internship program, and that helped her go to NUI Galway's uh, Irish Center for Human Rights, where she did business and human rights related research and then that launched her into her uh, uh, um, uh, position with the uh, the foreign ministry in Geneva. Okay yeah yeah I just wanted to to check in about that because I suppose it might be confusing for for people in terms of Fulbright and our two-year home rule and everything like that and um, just to point out that you know while uh, you can obviously stay on finish your degree uh, no matter how long it is really but then I know for sure like researchers would would stay on to do postdoc work sometimes um, and and you know whether if an internship could fit into that um, it may be possible to stay in the uh, US for that time um, but it's just important to note that that to your home rule real means that you won't be able to apply for a, a working permit or a residency permit in the US outside of kind of um, you know doctoral or, or um, sorry postgraduate graduate research um, in terms of, of, of that rule. So hopefully that clarifies rather than confusing uh, more the issue. Um, we have one more question here um, for Indiana Law. Um, if you could, if you did the LLM program that can potentially lead to doing a JD, realistically how long would it take to get the JD and what would be the approximate cost? Also, okay, we we'll answer that one first, please, if that's okay. So I think that's to to Gabrielle. Yes, yes, um, that's a good question. Um, the the program it it depends really on your background and what you've taken. So you would apply to the JD program through the advanced standing um, uh, application, and they would do a determination of what courses coursework that you've done in your LLB, for example, and see if those are comparable to um, the courses that are required in the JD. The, the most um, that you could transfer, and this is an uh, ABA, American Bar Association um, limit, is up to what would be equivalent to one year of study. So you, the potential is that the JD degree would take two years instead of three years. Um, but that is that would be the most um, that you could transfer. Many people do get uh, that so that their JD is just a two-year degree then. Um, how much it costs, that's a good question and it would, um, it's a flat fee every year for the, for the JD students and I don't have that, uh, that number on the, uh, off the top of my head. Um, that goes because that goes through JD admissions, but there are also potential scholarships um, available for the advanced standing um, JD students. Uh, in addition to whatever kind of scholarships we have in the grad student um, program, so I can't answer exactly how much it would cost, um, but that that information is is easy to, should be easy to find on our website. Um, Great. Okay, so great. That, that's, yeah. Sure. No, I was just going to say there's a second part to that question as well. Just if you had a typical LLB or BCL degree, what exemptions could you get in the JD? So as far as exemptions being, um, which classes would be waived? Um, 
if I, I'm understanding that. Yeah, I think I, I presume I'm just sure maybe Andrew who's asking the question could clarify, but I think if if he already has um, an LLB or a BCL, would he would he you know be exempt of any courses or any specific um, you know or time time wise maybe? Definitely. So with like I said, so if you have done an LLB, um, the admissions um, office would look specifically at your transcripts to see um, what classes you've taken and if they're comparable to the classes that are required. So in the JD program, obviously, there are first year classes that everyone must take. But if you've done something similar, so if you've taken you know, property law at, um, in your LLB, then you you would not necessarily have to take it again. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so you'll take into account what what the student has already. Yeah, brilliant. Exactly. Okay, it's great. And also, I wanted to say, obviously, I think I think hopefully participants will know, but that um, you know, professionals, um, people with professional experience, are also encouraged to to apply for the LM programs as as in a, you know as well as students. So I think um, was it. Uh, at least you mentioned, or, or or Gabrielle, I'm not sure. Sorry that so you know there would typically be um, a good few mature students as well as students coming um, kind of early career. Yeah, it, at least from Penn, about 75% of our students have already worked. Many of whom are quite far along in the career. You know, judges, partners at law firms. But Fine. from Ireland, we find that the students tend to be relatively uh, if not uh, a right away grads, maybe a couple of years of experience. That's been okay. our, uh, our, our demographic from Ireland. Exactly, yeah. But it's open to, to a broader spectrum anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would also just mention we also have a, an opportunity for uh, students to transfer to the JD program. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, is there any other questions then from participants in terms of things they'd like to ask while we have the speakers here? Um, if if not, maybe um, Sean, Gabrielle, and at least with your permission, I um, I might share your email or a contact email um, with with the participants in case they wish to get in touch in the future. Please do. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Great, great. Um, so we can do that, and if there's any questions that come to mind over the coming days or um, weeks, um, participants, um, whether they're taking part today with us or watching this um, webinar back, um, can get in touch. Um, and those who are actually watching it back after um, today, uh, just you can email me at info at fulbright.ie. Um, for any of that information in terms of um, the speaker's email addresses. Um, so as you've heard, there's so much opportunity for students and professionals um, to do LLMs, to undertake really interesting and diverse um, courses in the U.S. through through Fulbright and through our um, participant schools here uh, to engage culturally. Um, and in terms of next steps, um, please do register interest in Fulbright on, online if you haven't already, and then further explore your LLM of choice. Um, you know, sometimes it's good to have um, one or two uh, options as well um, down there in your Fulbright application. Um, so with that, I suppose I'd like to thank our speakers so much for giving up um, an hour, an hour plus out of your busy day to talk to Irish students. Um, it really is a fantastic opportunity for, for them all to hear more about your program. So thank you so much again for, for taking part. Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much, Emma. Not at all. Not at all. Um, great to chat to you, um, and we'll be in touch if there's any queries anyway between um, now and our application deadline. Okay. Thank you all um, to our participants for for uh, joining us today as well. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. Okay. Thanks so much, and have a great evening. Bye all. Bye.